G'day viewers. In this segment, we'll talk about how IP handles connectivity errors with a protocol called ICMP. Now, many different things can happen while a packet has been forwarded. They can go wrong because maybe the fields in the packet were not quite what was expected. The topic that we're looking at in this video is what do we do when there's an error during packet forwarding? What we would like is some kind of error reporting facility so that information about problems could be returned to the host or whoever's sending so they could actually do something about it. Not surprisingly, this is the kind of facility that turns out to be very important in real networks to help them operate smoothly. So let's look at how IP does it. Well, IP handles the various kinds of error reporting and connectivity problems with a protocol called ICMP that stands for Internet Control Message Protocol. It's what's called a companion protocol to IP, is how it's often described. Essentially, IP and ICMP is always implemented together. You'll really hear about IP all of the time, but ICMP is implemented right beside it. ICMP messages are actually carried inside IP packets. So if you like, ICMP is a protocol that sits on top of IP. And you can uh, tell this if you look at an IP packet and the protocol number is set to 1 then uh, the, that IP packet is carrying an ICMP message. ICMP provides a variety of functionality that's useful for understanding connectivity problems. From our point of view, most of this functionality is error reporting. When there's an error, well, when there's a problem forwarding a packet at a router, that's what I'm calling an error, and that is often then reported to whoever sent the packet, so they could do something about it. IP also provides a little bit of other um, functionality, for, for instance, for testing the network without having to have any error occur. But we won't worry about this too much. We'll concentrate on errors. <clears throat> Here's the overall picture for um, uh, how ICMP is involved in errors during forwarding. What happens is that, uh, you know, step number one, someone sends a packet. This source on the left send a packet into the network. It looks like a strange packet. Maybe it makes it through the network somehow. And then at some router, some router has a problem forwarding this packet because of bad information in it perhaps. This is step number two. What does the router do then? Well, it sends a report. That's this ICMP report. And then it discards the packet because it can't handle it. So this ICMP report, this is step number three. This will make its way back across the network to the source that sent this bad packet. And hopefully, step number four, the source will receive this ICMP message, understand what it's doing wrong, and take some step to fix the problem. Let's learn a little bit more about ICMP by looking at the format of ICMP messages. So every ICMP message has an ICMP header that carries information about the type and code of the message, as well as a checksum. Most ICMP messages also carry a portion of the offending packet, the trigger packet, whatever you want to call it, the packet that encountered an error and caused this message to be generated. By carrying the start of that packet, as much of it as will fit in the ICMP message, we're sort of returning that packet to whoever sent it so they can look at it and see what it was they did wrong. And this whole message is carried in an IP packet. So instead of let me just talk, let me just try and draw some of this. So we'll start sort of in the middle. Here's the ICMP header. I said it has a type, a code, and then a checksum. So they maybe be different portions of it. It's then going to carry some data. So here's the ICMP data. What's carried in there? Well, essentially the beginnings of an IP packet. I'll just call it bad packet. That's the packet which caused this problem in the first place. And this ICMP message is sent over the network in its own IP packet. So at the front of it, there'll be an IP header. Just a standard IP header. Here I've cleaned up that drawing, and I've also added a little bit more information about the addressing. We need to be able to put, um, well, the, the different addresses in, in this packet to make sure the message gets to the right place. So let's think about how it is that the uh, router knows to send an ICMP message back to the host which was causing the problem. 
The packet which we have inside the ICMP data here, since it's the beginning of a bad packet, it will have its own IP header. That header will have a source and a destination. It tells us where this bad packet came from and where it's going to. So to send the ICMP report, we can look at the source of the packet, who sent it, that's A, and we can use that as the destination when we make an IP header to slap on the ICMP message. For the source of the message, we don't use anything that's in the packet, rather the source of this ICMP message is the router which is generating it, which had the problem. So you can see here that the router will put its own IP address on the source packet, as the source address, and send it through the network. I've shown the protocol here one to indicate that inside the packet, the IP packet, there is ICMP information. That will have a different type and code depending on the message and some other information. The format of ICMP messages depends on their type and code values, so it can be different after some initial type and code values. Here are some examples of ICMP messages which you might see on networks. There is a destination unreachable network. If you ever sort of get a message about hosts not being reachable or networks not being reachable, usually it's because your uh, computer has received a destination unreachable ICMP message when you tried to send a destination and the network couldn't work out where, which way to send it. It will be type 3 and it'll have different codes depending on what it's trying to say is unreachable. Another kind of unreachable message is destination unreachable because of fragmentation. The network needed to fragment the packet, but the don't fragment bit was set so it couldn't returns this error message. That's actually what's used to uh, provide for path MTU discovery, the mechanism we looked at in a previous segment. Now another interesting message is one called a time exceeded in transit message. This essentially means that the packet has been in the network too long and has not yet reached its destination. This is functionality which is cleverly used by Traceroute. We'll look at that on just the next slide. And then finally there's another bit of functionality you might see from time to time. And that's an echo request or echo reply packet. This is used for the program ping. You might have used ping to ping a host and see if it's alive and reachable on the network. This last category, ping, is, is a little different than the former ones because this is not an error that occurs that's generated by a router during forwarding. Instead, an echo request is something that a host sends from one host to another host. And the destination host, the IP layer inside the destination host, knows that it is an echo request and it responds with an echo reply. So it's a way of seeing if a host is alive rather than error reporting. So to, to wrap up information on, tra on uh, ICMP, let's look at how Traceroute uses ICMP. Recall, here's, here's another picture, same picture, of the IP header. And now I'm highlighting that the IP header includes this time to live field. The time to live field is um, a value which is put on the packet when it's sent into the network and then it's decremented every time the packet goes through a router. So it's really actually a hop limit field, not a time to live field, that's an old name. And uh, if this counter ever reaches zero, then the network throws, the router throws away the packet and sends an ICMP message, error message back to the source. The purpose of this time to live field is to protect against forwarding loops. Imagine that the network forwarding tables were somehow messed up and they had a loop in them. Well, if you sent packets, they could get caught in this loop and go round and round and round amazingly fast and clog up the network. So the time to loop field is important for robustness. It throws away packets if they're caught in a routing loop. Traceroute very cleverly repurposes this time to live functionality as well as the ICMP error message functionality. This you might recall is a slide from something I showed you right back in a much earlier unit at the start of the course. It's how Traceroute works. You recall that Traceroute sends a probe into the network one hop and then it gets a message back so it knows what the first hop is, then two hops, gets a message back, three hops and so on. So it finds the path through the network. You might have been wondering exactly how that works. Well, it works with ICMP errors and the time to live field. The way uh, Traceroute works is it sends a message with a TTL of 1 to do the first hop. That will expire at the first router and cause this ICMP message to be sent back. 
Next it will send a message with the TTL of 2 to go 2 hops and we'll get another ICMP message back. Then a TTL of 3 that will produce an ICMP error on the third router out and so forth. And you can see that this is essentially how Traceroute performs its magic by repurposing this functionality that was there for other mechanisms by reusing it in a very clever way. We have one of the most important error debugging facilities in the internet.